Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and this will be part three for creating a model view controller framework with PHP from scratch. So the last video, we actually were setting it up so that we could load our controller file and our action, and then we were able to load our view file. So we're getting pretty far pretty fast. I'm surprised though it took us 30 minutes to do that, or me. And uh, if you watched all of it, then it took you 30 minutes to watch me. Um, what we're going to do now is we've got a route. We're able to load our welcome index. What I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to be able to pass variables to my control, my view file. And there are a lot of people that are, you'll lot, it's a lot of frameworks that differently. Some will do like where this set and you'll give it the variable name and its value. And some say different things like that. My favorite method in particular is to say this and give it your variable name just like you always do. You know, like we can create variables in the function like temporary, you know, temp variable equals hello, and then we do some more stuff to it down here. But then by the time we want to get to our view file, we'll say this name or this message equals our temp variable. And uh, by running this message, we actually pass our text or our actual variable to the view file. So uh, this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to have to make a little bit of a, modific a few modifications to our framework. So we'll just do for right now, we'll say this name equals Baylor. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that our controller can actually get those variables. So we'll do this by saying we'll create a function and this is going to be the set function and this is given to us in PHP 5, maybe 4, I'm not really sure, it's a magic method where you, when you set variables it runs this and you get the name of the variable and its value. So if we echo out the name right now, you're actually going to see name and that came from this name right here. And in my view I'm going to remove all this text so we see that and we can also see the value of it and that is Baylor. So we can actually do some stuff with this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a public static variable called uh, user of ours and this will be equal to an array and when we set a variable we're just gonna say self user of ours is going to be a, our array, we're gonna get our name and that's gonna be equal to the value. So we can, act, but the thing is, the problem, really big problem, is now we can't like say echo out this name. So when we do this, it says the undefined property. And it's because this controller function is overriding the, the default syntax or structure of PHP or whatever you want to call it. And uh, what we can do to fix that is we'll just create another function, call this one get. And when we get a variable name, we're just going to make sure, say, if, or let's do like this, return, and we're going to say if is set self user of ours, and we're going to look for the variable with the key name, so we put that up here. So if this is set, then we're going to return our user of ours name, uh, else we're going to return null. So if we do this and we echo this out, uh, this needs to be self again. Then you actually see we get Baylor. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm writing a whole like if is set goes here. So if this variable is set, then we return that variable. Else we return null. And you that's everything going on right here. Uh, this is our if statement that you see right here. This is saying whatever between whatever's between this question mark and this colon is this right here. So we're returning the self user of ours name, which we set up here, and else we're going to do null. Uh, I go a little bit more in detail in another video in my PHP from scratch series, and it's going to be in one of the if statement videos. So uh, you can look that up if you, you want to kind of continue on with that. So basically, you can see what happened when I ran this is that I was able to get my name variable. And uh, if I did like var dump this name, we should get a string. 
And what's kind of neat and kind of weird, if you create variables that don't exist, uh, well, that was bad, but like we said, thank var, um, you can see that it actually doesn't exist because it actually gave us this right here. Now, if I commented all this out, um, you can see we got an error. So uh, we can use this to our advantage because now we're actually storing all of these variables. The thing is, though, that is kind of bad is that in our router, so we jump over to our router where we're loading this view file. This is where we need to actually put our variables because any variable that happens above and include gets thrown into this view path or into our file. So essentially, inside of my root, I can say echo out controller. And you can see it gave us welcome. And it gave us that because it was, okay, it, it gave us this variable because it was found in right here, controller. So we'd have access to controller action and format. So one thing that we want to do before we actually include this file is delete those. So we'll just say unset the controller variable, the action variable, and the format variable. So if we reload this, you can see we get undefined variable controller. So we're not able to access these. The thing is, though, we need to be able to access all the user bars. So I, I, the way I did this the first time, and I kind of want to do it again, and let's just take a look. We can, can we access our controller? So debug the controller user vars. We can. We can access these variables. Now the way that I did this before is I created a class called object. I said that my controller extends object and I put this inside of there and I also said that my router extends the object as well. And then I was able to say self get user vars. Hopefully that makes sense. If it did it? I'm really tempted to do it again. Um, I'm going to pause the video and look and see, did I do anything else there that would make it where that is the best way to do it? Because uh, it might not be necessary. Okay, so uh, looking back and seeing what I did, uh, it will be pretty useful if we, uh, if we go ahead and use that method. So let's go back and actually do that real quick. And uh, it's not going to be too hard. We've already, we're going to say this extends object. And uh, make sure my controller still extends it. And we're going to create a new file called object.php. It's going to be a simple class called object. And uh, um, this will be available to all extending control or classes. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take what I put here and put it into the object. So this still works. Um, line four. Oh, we need to include it. So go to the core file, and above all of this, we're going to say include our object. Undefined available controller. Okay, we're right back to our view, so we can remove this. So uh, our object actually sets this up. And what's cool is inside of our router, we have access to that variable. We can say debug self user vars. And you can see we get our name again. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to run a for each loop. And uh, we're going to see say for each, uh, oh, let me think. We're going to say for each self user vars as a variable equals its value. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say var equals value. Now notice how I did this double, double, double dollar sign thing here. What that does is essentially, let's say we have a variable, we want to create a variable called name. So we say name equals Baylor. Well, what we could also do is we could say the variable name equals name. And here, where we say name, we're just going to duplicate, we're going to say var name. Essentially what we're doing is we're saying this variable has the value for this variable. Does that, it's kind of kind of weird. Tell me, it's, I don't know how to explain it really. 
hopefully that kind of makes sense. Essentially what's happening under the hood here is uh, we're saying name equals failure, like that. Because we're getting this name and it gets placed here and it, it just recreate, it's basically creating that. So essentially what we're doing up here where we're doing this user bars thing is we had that array, so it creates name and it puts it right here and it says its value is equal to Baylor. So what we can do now because of that is inside of here we can say my name is php echo out name. Reload, you can see my name is Baylor. And we got that by saying this name equals Baylor. Now what's neat is that regular variables, so if I said uh, name equals Baylor, we're not going to have access to that variable. So uh, it's pretty nice to be able to actually have access to these, these variables. So, uh, or be able to access these variables simply by putting this in here. So uh, that's, that's a little bit that's been done here. I mean, this wasn't near as complicated or had to near as much as the last one. Um, all we really did was we created our new object that has stuff for, that is available to all our classes. So our controller and our router can both access these. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's all we really need to do in this video. Thanks for watching it, and uh, hopefully you uh, learned something. And uh, don't forget that I've actually put this on GitHub. The, the project name is PHP MVC Tutorial. So uh, thanks for watching this video, and goodbye.